Hi, tonight I want to do a review of the Radiolink Pixhawk. So this is a Pixhawk flight controller um, that I bought on Amazon. I'm really happy with it. It's got some really cool features. Um, it came with the GPS that you can see right here. Um, it came with the board, obviously, the power module, which is off screen, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, it did not come with this radio link, but we'll talk about that again in a second. It also came with the buzzer and the safety switch. Um, and these are all important parts that uh, need to come with the Pixhawk in order for, it, for you to really get the value out of the product. Um, so, what is the Pixhawk? Well, the Pixhawk is basically a um, quadcopter or plane flight control board, uh, much like you might see with Betaflight or iNav or, or Raceflight or any of those. Um, however, the big difference with this one is it was one of the first to come out. Um, but it's also got the most advanced features and it's the most stable. Um, uh, one of the main differences is that built in out of the box, it does um, GPS handling. Um, you can connect it using this telemetry module to a tablet um, and you can actually tap on the tablet to say, I want to fly over there. You're not really going to use this in a racing drone. This is really designed for your... Um, your larger drones. So this is a 550 millimeter uh, quad um, that's going to have a GoPro camera tracking gimbal uh, once the project's finished. So that's really where it excels. So you've got the telemetry link that can go back to a tablet. I'm controlling mine using my FR Sky radio. Um, you obviously got the GPS up here. It connects up into the GPS port with the I2C. The power module plugs in down here. I've installed LiDAR on telemetry 2. Telemetry 1 is going to this telemetry radio um, and then you've got over here you have your uh, your buzzer and then your safety switch. Um, the buzzer and safety switch are really important. I'll, I'll power off the uh, drone so you can hear it. So if we plug it back in it's gonna start singing. So it's going through its pre-boot checks. So the buzzer and the LEDs tell you a bunch of different things. So there's actually several processes inside of this Pixhawk unit, uh, and it's specifically designed to allow for redundancy. So this is designed to do very high quality flights, um, lots of redundancy um, and other such um, functionality where you really want to not lose this. I mean, this is a 550 millimeter quad. This is a big quad. Um, and you know you don't you don't want to lose this, and you also don't want it crashing into anybody. So the fact that it's got the extra rel reliability in here is useful. So this main LED down here tells you what's going on, and you can also see that the light on the safety switch is blinking over here. That means that it's um, it's not ready to arm. So if we attempt to arm it, I push the safety switch in and hold it. It won't arm. Well, it won't go to pre-arm is what they call it. Uh, arming is done through the transmitter and the sticks. So we're getting nothing on here. Um, so I'm going to connect to the USB and see what's going on on the other side. But this safety switch blinking yellow basically says that um, the quad is not safe to fly yet. So I've got to find out why. So the problem I'm seeing is compass calibration is off. So the GPS, the unit that you can see just off screen, this has got a compass in it. The Pixel also has its own compass in it, and you can add a third compass should you want to. Um, and all of these systems are designed to be redundant so that you don't lose your craft. Uh, you can connect multiple devices to the I2C bus uh, in case you want to do any kind of other sensors. Um, you can take, it'll take Spectrum DSM directly into this socket, including bind functions on the ground control software. And I've, I've plugged in over here into the motor outputs, um, into the RC in, which is where I've got S bus coming out of my Tyrannus. Uh, this is currently running on uh, XSR Tyrannus. Um, so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to calibrate the compass real quick and I will come right back. Okay, so now that the GPS and compass has been calibrated, um, we can talk a little bit more about it. So we can see here that the uh, light here is flashing blue. That means that 
the quad has is is able to be armed and it's able to be flown however it cannot be uh you can't use any of the gps modes when this goes green we'll get gps modes available to us um the other indicator is the leds on this gps will start to flash and i think the problem is that the gps is directly underneath the gopro and it can't see the satellites which would make a lot of sense um the other big thing that's important is the safety switch. So you're not going to be able to arm the quad until the safety switch is happy. Um, and so you push and hold the safety switch and then you're into what it calls pre-arm. If it does any kind of tone because it doesn't have a GPS, it doesn't have any of its internal functions aren't working, you'll get a tone and a yellow flashing light like we had before. Um, so this has got a lot of really valuable features. Uh, I've been really happy with this. Um, we maidened it the other weekend and we were able to, we were able to test stabilize, which is just regular stabilized flight. Um, it has a loiter mode, which is very, very easy to fly. Great for beginners, uh, but also great for sort of stabilized shots, um, for doing video. I, um, I really liked it because basically the throttle controls your altitude and then you move the sticks around and it just sort of flies. It, it's very hard to crash in that mode. Um, it was very, very easy to control. We then tried return to land or return to launch, which was really useful. Um, so we moved the quad away and it came back. And um, we even tested the functionality of tapping on the uh, tapping on the switch on the um, on the uh, on the tablet to allow it to basically function um, to tell it where to go via the waypoint. So that was a really cool feature. Uh, I'm looking forward to using this for when I do camera drone type work. Um, so if I move you over here to my PC, we can see some of the information coming from the drone. It's still trying to get a satellite lock, and now the GoPro has moved. We can actually see that it has green light. So that means it's going to get satellite lock, and it will show where we are. Um, and this is really cool because we've got our station in here so we can see all of the various pieces of information. Um, you can actually use this as your ground control station if you wish to. I'm currently using a tablet with the, uh, with the FPV link and that's been really cool, but you can do, um, various different, um, various different modes that allow various different things. Um, the GPS is wandering because we're inside the house. Um, so we'll try and do a pre-arm again. Um, and basically what will happen is that now we can, we can fly the quad um, and allow it to work. I've got it set up with the switch. And you can hear it, it beeps each time the mode switches. Um, and you can set up everything from flight plan data um, to hardware information. So I've actually got some optional hardware. I have the SICK radio in here. There's the battery monitor for setting up stuff. Make sure you calibrate this. Mine was wrong the first time when I crashed the quad because it thought it had battery. So you have to calibrate this. Um, we've also got included in this one, which is the range finder. So this is a LiDAR that I've got on the bottom. Uh, it didn't come with a kit, but I added it afterwards. Um, I can use this for, for very precise measurement of where the ground is. And so this quad will auto land itself. Um, and like I said, I've been really happy with it. It works really well. So anyway, that's my review. I've been really pleased with this quad and, um, you know, let me know if you have any questions about it. I'd be happy to answer them. Have a good night.